Hello! My name is Kyle Swafford, and I'm here to take you on a sojourn through Brandon Sanderson's fictional universe, The Cosmere. Today, we're going to be looking at what I'm calling A Brief History of Roshar. By the end of this episode, you should be well on your way to a deeper understanding of Roshar and history, and should have significantly less problems understanding what the heck everyone's talking about in both the Way of Kings and beyond. Before we get started, as this is a general overview, I will be going over history discussed in all books released in the Cosmere so far, but will not be spoiling any plot points. This does mean that in some parts I will have to uh, sort of smudge or obscure some facts from the viewer. Uh, it should be noted that I hope to release more in-depth spoilery videos on all these topics at a later time, specifically to sate my viewers unquenchable thirst for Cosmere knowledge. Now, with that out of the way. Let's take a look at the history of Brandon Sanderson's fictional world, Roshar. We don't know much about how this world came to be, but we do know the being responsible for its creation, an incomprehensibly powerful magical being named Adonalsium. After creating Roshar, the being then moved off, fucking died, and shattered into 16 incredibly powerful pieces of itself. The pieces, called shards, each tasked their holder with one intention. Some in-universe examples include honor, preservation, odium, dominion, autonomy, devotion, cultivation, and ambition. As you might be able to guess, each shard is more or less forced into pursuing the intent it was assigned, but with some wiggle room for interpretation. By the way, some might or might not have been dragons. Cool. Either way, two of these godlike beings then came back to Roshar, honor and cultivation. We are led to believe things were good for a time, at least until the Shard Odium showed up. Basically, he's trying to break them up into even smaller god pieces to some unknown end. We, we don't really know. They managed to trap him on a moon of Roshar named Braze with the help of ten extraordinary individuals of Roshar named Heralds. They forged a pact together with their gods to help stop Odium from ever reaching Roshar, called the Oath Pact. This gave these individuals incredible magical abilities, as well as some really dope swords called Honor Blades. This pact also gave each user access to two of the ten magic powers present on Roshar, named Surges. They were tasked with using these powers to rally their people and defeat Odium and his army of Voidbringers. Some heralds died each time he came back, and yes, I said each time. The heralds had voluntarily consigned themselves to an eternity of death and rebirth, you see. Each time they died on Roshar, their souls were transported to Braze with Odium, where they were tortured by Voidspren for years and years and years until, eventually, one of them broke. This then transported them all back to Roshar, while letting Odium send his forces back as well. These ten people were called the Heralds as they heralded the time of desolation, the time of Odium's return. This process went on for some time, but something curious and unintentional happened along the way. Rosharan spirits named Spren actually started forming bonds with the normal humans of Roshar. This gave them access to the surges, or magical abilities, of the Heralds, among other things. We don't know too much about when this started happening or why, but we do know that ten orders were formed from these new magic users. Each of the ten orders corresponded to a herald, who in time acted as a sort of patron of their order. Some orders were big, some were small, some were uh, super in the open, while others tended towards absolute secrecy. But collectively, they were known as the Knights Radiant. They also had their own dope swords, called Shard Blades. Some of my more observant viewers at this point might be thinking the pact was bound to fail. Uh, with or without the Radiance, humans just cannot take that amount of torture. The time it took to break the heralds became shorter and shorter. They died over and over again, being reborn into a weaker and weaker world, a world less and less technologically prepared to deal with Odium's forces. And so the heralds broke their oath. In the last desolation, nine of the ten heralds did not die and made the choice not to go back to Braze, hoping that the one that did go back would be enough to hold back the forces of Odium. They gave up their honor blades and let the oath pact rest solely on the one herald that died during that desolation. 
this actually seems to have worked, and uh, 4,500 years-ish managed to pass with no signs of another desolation of any sort. Events become a bit fuzzy in the next 4,500 years, and much of what is recorded is either bad information or downright misleading due to the interference of various religious institutions, among other historical factors. However, we do know several major events that happened in this time period, and I will present them here in no particular order, as we are not 100% sure in which order they happened. Firstly, the Scouring of Amia. Amia is a series of islands just west of Shinovar, and was once a kingdom in and of itself. Sometime during this time period, however, it was absolutely decimated in some sort of search, possibly for an ultra-powerful weapon called the Dawn Shards, and was then promptly closed off to the outside world. Uh, secondly, Honor. Something happened to him during this time period, and his presence on Roshar has either diminished or has died out completely. Again, we're not quite sure, but we do get hints about what's going on here in, at the very least, the first three books. Lastly, the Recreants. This is when all Knights Radiant broke their oaths, laid down their weapons, forsook their bonds they shared with their spren, and faded into legend, never to return. The last bit I would like to touch on before I leave you is the Hierocracy. This was a religious government that practiced a precursor of the modern Rosharan religion, Voronism. One of their main goals was to expunge all records of the Lost Radiance, the Recreants, and a place called Shadesmar. Yeah, more on Shadesmar will be coming in another video because that place is super cool and I can't wait to talk about it. Um, back to other stuff though. They managed to unite a good portion of Roshar before being utterly annihilated by an Alethi warlord named Sadis the Sunmaker. This left the Voran religion as the loose collection of competing devotaries devoid of political power that we find it as today. This about wraps up my overview of Roshar and history and should put you on track towards a deeper understanding of both Roshar and the Cosmere. I believe the next video I'll be working on will be a brief overview of Roshar's geography, and then I'll probably dive into the topics of flora, fauna, spren, and the races of Roshar. There's there's so much good stuff to explore here. And really, there's a lot of good stuff that I had to leave out of this video, so I would encourage every single one of my viewers to go out, support Mr. Sanderson directly by buying the books, and then uh, diving in yourself. There's even a fourth book coming out this November, so now is a better time than ever. Well, Storms, I've had fun explaining this all to you, and hopefully you've had even half that fun watching the video. I'd kindly remind you to like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter for some quality creme posting as well as general updates. Have a fantastic day, folks.